Yep, I can see the screen. Thank you, sir. Uh, the recording is started. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Once again, thank you for joining on Saturday morning uh, as a part of PMAPCC Agile Series Session 2. Today, we have another topic. Uh, like from last last month, uh, we have uh, spoke on Spotify model. And today, uh, the topic is on value stream management. And as I was saying earlier, our all sessions are recorded in the uh, uh, WebEx and uploaded to the YouTube channel, our PMI PCC YouTube channel. I've already texted the links of the uh, uh, recordings in the chat. You can see the session one recordings and session two, along with our Agile conference uh, recordings. Uh, you can go through the videos. With that, I'll take a privilege to introduce our very own uh, uh, past uh, immediate past president of our PMI PCC, Mr. Venkat Reddy Charla. So he's a uh, uh, you know, very seasoned enterprise agile coach, principal business consultant. I'm currently working in Infosys Consulting. Uh, in our series one also, we have taken the uh, uh, session. Thanks again, sir, for coming uh, forward uh, with your passion. With your experience, obviously, our members will be get benefited. So uh, the topic, uh, as you selected, is really uh, now good and very important, the value stream management. And I'll pass it on to you, sir. And thanks for again for coming forward and you know taking the session. Yeah. Sure, Vinay. Yep, thanks a lot. It's not really a pleasure to be here, actually. It's, it's like uh, coming to home ground. And uh, no, it's. Uh, I think uh, the series is going in full swing. I say that so thanks to all the PMI PCC, especially you and I for uh, leading this initiative and uh, we are covering very good topics uh, so far. And today is going to be e e another uh, interesting topic uh, we are going to cover today uh, about uh, value stream management. Okay, so we are going to discuss uh, uh, in depth uh, about uh, no value stream. Some of you might be already familiar with value stream. Uh, how many of you have experience uh, uh, or implementing value stream or at least uh, have knowledge about value stream? Can you type yes or no in, in the chat box? Okay, so I see a good number of yes and a couple of no as well. No, but no, glad to uh, uh, all of you know that you know, this session covers uh, both of you. So in terms of covering uh, right from the basics, in terms of explaining uh, uh, from the definitions of value stream and also looking at the holistic view. So if you're in, uh, if you are aware of value stream and already implementing in your projects, this session also gives you a holistic view of how you can uh, uh, look at the end-to-end -end, uh, product delivery improvements, uh, leveraging value stream. So we are going to cover not only value stream management, we are going to talk a bit about uh, value stream mapping process and how it is linked to the Agile, uh, because day in, day out, you hear this uh, in Agile and of course the benefits and different types of value stream, how you can organize the overall projects uh, around the uh, value streams. So these are the specific topics uh, uh, we are going to discuss today. Okay, so for uh, for those of you, uh, as Vinay mentioned, uh, uh, I'm an enterprise agile coach. So there could be some references uh, to different frameworks and uh, no frameworks like a safe uh, or framework like displayed agile. But this topic is predominantly, I would say framework agnostic uh, because we are going to cover multiple frameworks, the same concepts being used in, uh, in multiple frameworks uh, as it is. Okay, and uh, so we're going to discuss in relation to the multiple frameworks. There could be some terminology here from frameworks, but this can be apl applicable to whether if you are using Kanban, Scrum, Safe, the, the same concepts can be used without uh, any changes. So that, that's about the topic. And uh, uh, I think when I mentioned about Infosys Consulting, so we are, uh, I'm, I'm from the Infosys uh, Consulting. So if uh, some of you, not aware of uh, Infosys Consulting. It's a subsidiary of uh, the, the in, so major Infosys. And also we are uh, one of the top five uh, consulting companies 
in the world uh, as per the recent report as well. So having said that, so let me jump deep dive into topic. So why I'm saying this topic is very important just, just because of this uh, slide. Now you see this uh, by Gartner, again, I'm not saying this, 70% of the organization's huge value stream management. This is the slide from uh, Scaled Agile actually uh, in, to improve the flow. So 70% of that, we are already halfway through. So we need to see, you know, what their uh, next year report will say. But according to Gartner, 70% of the organizations will use value stream management to improve uh, the flow. Okay. So I think the the gist of it here is whether it is 70%, 80% or not, but the gist of it is more, more and more organizations are using uh, value stream management to optimize the flow, to help deliver uh, value faster. Okay, so uh, it, it the focus on CTQ. You know, when we talk about project management, the, the major focus is on uh, cost, time, and quality. But in the agile world, I think all of you know we talk more and more about business value, customer value. So this is the crux of uh, uh, agile, and uh, also uh, value stream management or value stream mapping are the important tools to optimize the value of uh, flow. Uh, in an organization. So we'll see how exactly we can use these tools to leverage and improve uh, the, the value, uh, the end customer value, uh, leveraging these tools. Okay, so let's start from the, uh, the basic uh, definition. So I think uh, this term, all of you would have heard in one or the other, uh, you know, in any, 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 as I said, any framework you use, any, even including in the project management, you would have heard uh, this term. This is not a new term to many of us. This term exists way back uh, from 1990 onwards. You know, it is, uh, there is a book actually that's released, I think, way back in uh, 1990, The Machine That Changed the World, or Lean Thinking. These are the books that was released in the in the 90 decade that actually introduced this term to the industry. So it's actually coming from uh, TPS, the Toyota Production System, and other uh, lean thinking uh, uh, concepts. So, so this is this exists uh, for multiple decades. Okay, so in in broader sense, we talk about uh, you know what are the different activities undertake uh, to deliver a customer request. From you know, we we call it in different terms, right? So whether we call it as a request to receive, uh, order to cash, ring to ring. Uh, sometimes we call it as cradle to grave. It's it's very interesting term. Or Code to cash. You know, these are different terms we use. Okay, but this all refers to defining your value stream. Okay, set of actions we, which actually adds value. Because as I mentioned earlier, we talk about uh, business value. We talk about uh, customer value. So anything and any activity that adds value, it could be value in terms of uh, revenue. It could be value in terms of. Uh, uh, quality, it could be value in terms of uh, customer satisfaction. So its value can be defined in multiple ways, uh, uh, as all of you know. Okay, so anything that any specific actions that adds value to the customer request uh, is is part of the value stream. That's how we, we look at the uh, value stream. And most of the times we get confused with uh, you know, uh, value stream versus process maps or value stream versus uh, a user journey maps or story maps and so on and so forth. So, but there is significant difference between uh, the other tools and the value stream. And you're going to see that in the session, how exactly it is different. Okay. And uh, you're going to look at in conjunction with the agile methodologies as well as I mentioned, uh, you know, how you can uh, uh, focus on a customer uh, or business value in using value stream in agile. Okay. So if you look at uh, an example of this, uh, suppose, okay, so we talk about uh, uh, a simple uh, loan example. Okay, so what are the different steps, uh, value added steps in this? So attract customer, we create code, so complete loan application, eligibility decisions about you would, you go for a loan that starts with uh, the marketing attracting the customer. So you have a loan need and at the end of it, uh, uh, the bank that the repayment plus interest is the end value delivery 
for the organization. So there are different steps involved uh, from the bank point of view. So attracting customers, quick rate loan and uh, completing application, eligibility decision, extend loan loan term. So these are the sequence of steps. If you see, look at the, the customer point of view and the organization point of view, these are the sequence of steps that happens uh, in, in a uh no loan processing so this is nothing but the value stream for the different uh, terms we call it as uh no but this is nothing but the value stream here there are people involved from uh, different de departments okay so uh, uh, there are people involved the customer is involved the, the loan seeker and the bank uh, units are involved there is an information flow uh, between the customer and the different bank departments so all these are very much part of the value stream so if you look at uh, uh, some some of the key attributes here, okay. So uh, considering the value stream definition in the previous slide, uh, most value streams are highly cross-functional. So we talk about uh, it's not just most of the times. So it's not just uh, uh, one department serving uh, the customer request, right? So it is multiple. If you look at this example here, we are talking about uh, uh, the uh marketing department involved in uh, attracting the customer we are talking about uh, back office involving the providing a quick rate code and maybe front office in uh, in completing the uh, front office application and uh, we we the eligibility decision it could be again back office uh, or the risk management team checking uh, uh, your eligibility and your uh, civil scores and all that so there are multiple departments involved in a value stream suppose if you're developing a software product so this applicable to all the industries i'm not talking about just uh, software development but as an example if i take from my industry suppose if you're working on a software delivery so obviously involves multiple departments we know how exactly the projects are this cannot be simply done by one department or one uh, team so it has to be involved multiple people from different teams coming together and deliver the product. So that's where uh, the value of the, the value stream, I would say, it comes out. And so that's a differentiating factor also. And uh, value streams comes in many forms. Here we are talking about a core operational process, right? Right from the customer need to uh, the repayment uh, plus interest. There could be some supporting functions. Suppose if you look at a bank, uh, there could be you no know, supporting uh, departments like HR and supporting departments like uh, uh, finance and you know, there, there are multiple departments within the bank uh, which actually supports this operational uh, function okay operational process what we call it as so uh, similar to that value streams also comes in different so this this entire flow that we are talking about here is is nothing but uh, the value enabling or, uh, uh, or operational value stream, what we call it as uh, in, in case of SAFE, uh, or, or we call it as a simply value enabling value stream. And there could be some support value streams as we discussed. There could be some suppose uh, for attracting customers, there could be some marketing application that's being developed in parallel that itself has a, a separate value stream. That is nothing but a support uh, value stream, we call it as, okay? So there are number of people involved in processing this. So the people are recruited by HR. So there is a separate process uh, involved for HR function. Uh, uh, these are all support value streams, okay? So we talk about uh, uh, value streams can go on in both directions. So this is very important point. So we need to fix the the fence point, what we call it as uh, for the value stream. So suppose here uh, we are talking about uh, uh, no attracting customer here. So before this, suppose if I extend this further this side, so there could be a, no before attracting customer, there could be marketing campaign that itself has a value stream. So I can extend either this side or this side. Okay, so value stream can ext extend. Uh, and that's why when you're defining a value stream, you need to define the fence force and define value stream for that. So that's why there could be multiple value streams in an organization. That's actually the last, last uh, statement here. There could be multiple value streams, but you need to define the fence force and accordingly define your uh, the value streams. You need to define what is the scope you're looking at and you know what exactly the, the requests you're serving. Obviously the customer should be there in the value stream. So what specific customer requests you're serving, but from what point to what point? Okay, so that is definitely you need to define. And we may include 
activities done outside the parties, even the customers themselves, uh, no uh, part of a value stream. It is not just uh, uh, the organization. Sometimes we go beyond uh, and you no know, suppose there is a third party developing an application. There is a third party involved uh, uh, in getting the service done. So we can involve uh, uh, outside uh, organizations as well, part of the value stream. An organization can have one value stream or dozens of value streams, right? So if I'm if a simple a small organization working on one product or one service and there is one customer request and one delivery, it could be one value stream. But at the same time, you look at a, a, a big organization having multiple products and multiple services being delivered to the end customers. So obviously there could be many value streams. The simple, I think the simple way to look at is Wherever there is a simple request and there is a deliverable uh, linked to that, there is a value stream. So you have a request from a client, you do X, Y, G steps to do to uh, get the deliverable. There is a value stream. Okay. So uh, sometimes we we group related value streams um, into different uh, groups. We we call it as a portfolio uh, because all suppose all loans related this could be one no, value stream related to let's say personal loan so there is another value stream related to home loan which may be typical process but there could be some deviations uh, in the process so there could be uh, all loans related comes under the loans portfolio all uh, uh, deposits come under one portfolio so bank can be organizing all the related uh, uh, value streams under what we call it the product family or in case of uh, uh, safe we call it as a safe portfolio okay so that's that's the specific important attributes about uh, uh, value stream and it's not about just identifying the value stream because it's identifying the value stream we have all the steps done but if you want to get the best out of it and improve upon it and know how exactly I'm doing right now. What are the areas I can improve? Okay, so what specific areas uh, uh, I can analyze and understand what are the gaps we have? That is where this, some of these tools like value stream mapping, value stream management comes into picture. So it's a simple map and uh, uh, structure that helps uh, focus on flow and uh, how no it actually this is where the difference between uh, the journey user journeys or the process maps versus value stream mapping uh, comes value stream comes into picture as you see here uh, value stream we 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 represent multiple attributes here in the in the value stream okay so we represent uh, not only the process and the function excuse me uh, we represent uh, no multiple parameters like uh, the lead time okay the process time mm, uh, uh, we talk about the percentage completion complete and accurate so the percentage c and a so all these attributes will represent this is how uh, no a well defined process stream um, uh, should be drawn okay so it's not just uh, drawing about the process steps it also the information flow the tools that is being used okay the technologies that are being used and now you have uh, uh, these are nothing but the numbers how, and how many associates working with the, the resources working on this this is the the waiting queue how many items are waiting the work in progress and the waiting queues that we talk about uh, in kanban and uh, other frameworks as well so they're multiple so here we are representing suppose uh, the lead time uh, lead time is nothing but the response time or the total turnaround time that we talk about, right? So when when the work made available to a specific team versus when it is out of that uh, uh, function. So that is nothing but your total lead time. Process time is actually the actual time that we work on the ticket. Okay, so that's uh, the actual, that is the difference between this is the total turnaround time. This is the actual process time that takes to complete the task. It is maybe waiting for one day, including the delay time and everything, but the actual work is taking 10 minutes. There's nothing but your process time. So we talk about uh, uh, percentage complete and accurate. So it's basically, it represents uh, how much quality we are delivering to the next, next uh, 
process okay next uh, uh, function uh, in the value stream so uh, which is again like very important see most of the times if you look at in our projects also we are held up with rework that's because the previous team or previous uh, function has not done it properly and the input is not provided properly that is where this percentage c and a will help us so all these actually if you look at uh, uh, you no know, at, at this box here so we can calculate the total lead time total process time activity ratio is nothing but your uh, uh, pt by lt into 100 process time by lead time into 100 and uh, uh, rolled percentage c and a is nothing but uh, the total um, if you multiply all these percentage c and a uh, in into 100 you will get this overall rolled percentage c and a okay so so the total process lead time the lead time this for this specific example so is 9.5 days and but the actual process time is 180 minutes so the activity ratio comes to only 3.9 percent okay so this by looking at this itself by looking at a graph like this i have a couple of examples um, in the next slides as well by look but looking at this graph itself we know exactly at least some information about no value stream it is not just the sequence of steps but we understand okay where is it? it is actually taking time where is the waste is happening where is delays are higher where is the queue is higher okay uh, what exactly how you can optimize the end value so when when we say uh, optimize end value is nothing but we want to increase you no know, uh, the turnaround times so or deliver faster value with less turnaround time you know, we talk about sustainable lead time uh, in uh, in in uh, uh, lean uh, principles right so that is what we are talking about here so this is how uh, you need to draw a value stream which actually helps in uh, uh, identifying the major bottlenecks okay so uh, if you look at different steps that are involved in in the mapping process okay so this is again an important uh, i'm not going in depth uh, about uh, because this itself is a workshop we do uh, generally in safe and uh, other frameworks i just want to cover high level about uh, how exactly it is done to give a, a you no know, bird view picture of uh, how exactly this tool is being used okay but it's it's if you understand the gist, gist of it you can implement uh, very easily and it's uh, is the first step is involved in current state map as i showed you you need to draw the current state map and the future state map so based on specific improvements that you want to see in your process specific improvements you want to see in your uh, uh, value stream you need to identify where are the delays at what are the ways and you know uh, uh, how you can optimize the team mix and a lot of other things that you need to consider for a future state map come up with a future state map and then uh, identify the differences between current state map and future state map and come up with a transformation plan or action plan just simple three steps process so this is a, actually we do a one day or two day exercise uh, in practical i'm talking about not the workshop in practical a two days or three days exercise where we come up with a understanding of the 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 current flow so we talk about let's say let's take an example here uh, this is a simple example of a, a software delivery a maintenance process a cr a change request process you now this is just an example uh, uh, i took from uh, software side so it's it involves as you see here it involves uh, various steps here so it involves uh, deployment team talking to the customer account manager talking to the customer then alliance team and the product owner talking talking understanding the customer then the chain re change request is converted to work request and added to the backlog and getting it done uh, in the in the in the weekly sprints right so oh, here if you look at this is the current state diagram in order to come up with this current state diagram itself is a challenge so many organizations struggle here itself uh, let me tell you because i see in practical you no know, some of the organizations uh, don't have clue about the end to end flow how a product is delivered in most of the cases because it's so complex that we don't even know which ticket is going to which department and how it is being served and who is talking to the customer and uh, we talk about different variances in the tickets it could be an operational ticket it could be 
e an enhancement ticket or could be maintenance ticket and so on and so forth for example in this so there is a complex process involved in our organization so in order to come up with this value stream current state map itself uh, we require multiple uh, what we call it as jamba box okay so, so any of you heard jamba box what is it any idea what exactly is the jamba box okay go and go and see on the ground rajesh yeah thanks for that so it's yeah it's a, it's a real place where the work is actually done get on to the floor uh, no we it's not just one walk is sufficient to come up with this we need to walk through the flow uh, in this case you need to talk to uh, sales representatives and marketing department you need to talk to account account management department to understand uh, uh, what is the sls agreed with the client you need to talk to the core uh, product owners you need to talk to uh, you know the business owners you need to talk to the core agile teams to get the work done and you know, then the project is kicked off so this this is how you need to do multiple jamba works to come up with uh, uh, you no know, this current state map so once you have this current state map this is how the future state map for the same example looks like okay so if you look at this future state map so uh, for example so here the the total lead time uh, we reduce to 15 days uh, from the previous uh, lead time of uh, 27.4 days here right so that's a significant improvement that we we see here so how do we how do we this the, the crux of it is how do you come up with this future state map okay so here again now the 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 focus uh, here is you need to focus on how you can deliver the optimal customer value you you can't just look at one parameter so you need to look at how you can deliver optimal customer value so in that it is an op when i saying optimal customer value we can't compromise uh, uh, no our uh, uh, revenue you can't compromise our uh, uh, slas you can't compromise our uh, internal policies that we have within the organization so we need to look at how you can deliver the cust optimal customer value when you are coming up with this value stream map so you need to look at what are the value adding task and what are the non value adding ad tasks so maybe sometimes you you delivering some non value adding task so that you need to remove sometimes you may you may need to add um, a, a value adding task it's not the always that you no know, we, we have this misunderstanding that uh, when you say optimize value stream means that cut down some steps no so sometimes we may have to add new steps to optimize the end customer value okay so it could uh, also be plausible that uh no suppose we we want to add additional testing process suppose you want to improve percentage c and a we talking about right so the quality improvements that we want to see so maybe you want to introduce an additional testing process uh at the end of the functional spec say so that it will actually reduce uh the overall turnaround time for uh, overall lead time for uh, uh, product development okay so that's uh, these are the different steps we need to look at so when we say optimize process flow sometimes we may have to add some process steps as well okay so uh, sometimes uh, you may have to remove uh, non value added and handoffs you know there are many handoffs uh, uh, suppose in, in the previous example you see here there are many handoffs here uh, from one department to another department here so there are about uh, there is a significant reduction of handoffs here if you see okay so uh, how you can reduce the overall handoff handoffs uh, uh, so there about I, i i could say about 30% improvements from previous uh, map to the current map uh, the future state map that we see here okay and uh, how you can reduce the delays okay so you need to look at the delay that is happening and the wait times that are happening between the process and uh, process to process so how you can reduce so can you reduce batch size or increase uh, more capacity so that you know that the queues can be reduced here you have uh, uh, in the previous slide you have let's say uh, uh, 10 waiting in the queue 12 waiting in the queue here so how you can reduce the delays okay so to reduce so it could be multiple ways we can reduce the delay 
So it could be you reduce the batch size so that you know, uh, it will be faster and more. These are all the techniques that we talk about even in Kanban also, right? The work in VIP limits and uh, how you can optimize the work in progress limit to, to, achieve, to achieve the optimized flow. Okay, so uh, what is the, we need to understand what is the bottlenecks and how you can reduce it. And also we need to look at technology aspects. Suppose in the previous slide, so we are using uh, multiple tools here. Mm, uh, if you look at here, so we are using Excel, we are using Salesforce, MIPA and so on and so forth, multiple redundant tools, which is the case in typically in any organizations. So how you can uh, uh, consolidate and know, know, make sure. So here, if you look at in the future state map, uh, here we are talking about uh, reducing at least two or three tools for cut down. So they're simply using Salesforce and Jira to actually make sure the complete integration happens between uh, different uh, departments. So these are the different parameters we need to look at when we are coming up with this value stream mapping future state. So this is, as I said, this is an exercise we do uh, while uh, doing this exercise for future state design. We look at all these parameters. We look at this is where actually your value stream management also comes into picture. So if you, so far we talked about value stream mapping, value stream, value stream mapping. So the value stream management is the next level of value stream mapping. Okay, so we do have uh, a, a value stream map done. On top of it, we look at various factors, not just this value stream in consideration with the other value streams in the organization, uh, other value stream maps in the organization. We look at how to optimize as a whole. Okay, so any specific policies needs to be changed. Okay, so any specific uh, department structures needs to be changed. Any what specific in addition to this basic metrics I'm talking about here, what are the performance sectors? How exactly you link this to your uh, KREAs and performance metrics or KPIs that we talk about? That is nothing but your value stream management. So there could be, you no. Know, we talk about DevOps process. DevOps process is very much part of value stream management where you, we try to automate this entire value stream process uh, to a certain extent, right? So we look at next level of DevOps. Now we are talking about multiple areas uh, implementing, whether it is DevSecOps or business DevOps, we are talking about. These are all very much part of uh, 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 value stream management uh, in organizations that we talk about. So here uh, in this example, if you see, uh, so we increased almost about 30% uh, uh, in process time from 4.8 to 3.4 about 29.2 about 30% about uh, process time is increased and uh, with the with the current with the current state and the future state and uh, no, uh, we created the ability for the firm to deliver uh, uh, faster and no 45.3% uh, and of course the the percentage rolled complete and accurate if you see significant improvements from 5.9% to 35.7% which is significant improvement that the says that overall uh, uh, complete and accurate is about across all the functions is 35.7% so which is actually very good so the, the from the improvement perspective okay so this is how an ex simple ex example and an exercise how you you use a value stream mapping tool on top of the initial uh, value stream to to you know identify improvements and come up with so once you have this uh, future state and present state maps and future state maps done so then the comes the transformation and action plan so it's not these are the these are the numbers we want to achieve but in order to achieve this you need to have a transformation plan. So what is that? One, two, three. So we, we come up with various things like uh, uh, even before starting this activity. So we come up with value stream charter, what we call it as. Okay. So that is uh, like your project charter. So we have a value stream charter identifies the scope, uh, different departments involved and how exactly what specific areas we are progressing. What are the targets we are looking at? How you can achieve? What are the risks involved? What are the bottlenecks? all these being identified uh, as part of the charter and then then comes the plan part of it so all this is is again as i said is a big exercise but it's very important and this is the crux of any agile if you look at so i think i have a couple of slides in link in link to agile as well suppose scaled agile uh, if you're implementing safe if you're implementing this is the first step we do uh, after of course the trainings and all that this is the first step we do is identifying the value streams if you look at the safe implementation roadmap, uh, 
this is the first exercise we do, identifying the value streams and uh, release trends, what we call it as. Okay, so uh, value stream management, as I mentioned already, it is uh, uh, begins with value stream mapping. It's 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 a complementary to the value stream mapping. There is value stream mapping and value stream management are not different. It is, we look at the three levels, identify the value streams, define the value stream maps and define your value stream management on top of value stream map, mapping. Okay, so we uh, need to monitor the entire delivery process. We not just look at one place of the organization, we look at the entire organization and look at uh, the automation comes into bigger play in value stream management. Here we implement automated tools and automated processes in value stream management. And it ex exactly follows the lean principles that we look at app app application of uh, people, process and technology. So you look at how you can uh, optimize people, how you can organize the entire work around uh, value streams, how you can optimize your technology around value streams uh, is what defined in the value stream management. Okay, so in, in, con in context with Agile, so if you look at, no, we're talking about value, value stream and mapping and uh, management. Any, as I mentioned multiple times so far, any framework or any in any framework or any tool or any agile uh, in, including this agile manifesto so if you look at value stream is the predominant factor so you hear uh, in any agile uh, framework that you go about either it could be kanban safe scrum uh, disciplined agile and so on and so forth so a quick examples of it so of obviously the first one to start with the agile manifesto itself we look at continuous delivery of valuable software, the top of the box, right? This is the first principle you see in agile manifesto.org. How you can deliver valuable software. When I say valuable software, it's not about uh, only one factor like uh, low cost or uh, high quality or high turnaround, uh, low turnaround time and all that, right? So we look at how it is valuable to the end customer is what we measure in agile, right? So that is where the value delivery comes into picture. That is where the value stream maps and uh, value stream management will help. So if you look at the lean principle, the entire lean turns around value. Okay, so if these are the five lean principles, this exactly defines what we need to do. Define the value, map the value stream, create flow, establish pull system, let the customer pull the value, pursue perfection. So we talked about in the previous examples, we have seen how to define value stream map, how to define values, I mean defining, identifying the value stream, how you map the value stream, how to create the flow, establish pull system. We have seen how to optimize, pursue perfection, how, how you can optimize by looking at various parameters, uh, coming up with a future state map and uh, identifying, coming up with a transformation plan for uh, value stream maps and value stream management, right? This is... Uh, an example from lean uh, you can look at so but if if you're looking at safe principles suppose okay there are two important principles that specifically talks about value make value make value flow without inter interruptions if uh, i would definitely encourage all of you to read this article in uh, scaled agile portal very good information about how you can uh, uh, know identify bottlenecks in the flow and how you can make sure the value flows without any interruptions and you now we talk about Organizing that this is a new principle actually that is added uh, recently in in safe uh, uh, organizing around uh, value. Okay, how you can organize your whole work. So there's an example I can explain later. How you can organize around entire value. You know, your entire projects can be organized uh, around value. Okay, so we talk about uh, uh, development value streams, business value streams, and all that. Right, that I mentioned briefly in the earlier slide. If you look at uh, our own discipline agile from PMI. Okay, so if you look at uh, value stream is the crux of uh, discipline agile. If you look at uh, the principles uh, of uh, discipline agile, there are two important principles that talks about uh, uh, value stream. So we talk about uh, optimized flow and uh, enterprise awareness, right? So these two talk about optimized flow, exactly talks about how we can optimize flow. There are various uh, tools uh, Tools were given uh, in DA toolkit and uh, no, uh, enterprise awareness also talks about uh, when you draw the entire value stream map, 
any layman can understand how exactly the value flows within that process or within that value stream, right? So we we use these value streams sometimes even for uh, 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 you no know, induction and you no know, uh, making sure people not only for induction even within the projects people want to understand the entire flow we will draw these value stream maps initially so the enterprise awareness and optimized flow are the two important principles which actually talks about uh, value stream in discipline design okay so uh, a slide a, a slide again uh, this is from uh, uh, safe okay so uh, how to organize what are the benefits we see e from uh, organizing around value so we need Fewer hand apps, uh, handoffs that we see in the previous example. Easier to build quality. We understand where exactly the, the percentage C and A, suppose the rollover percentage C and A we're talking about, where exactly it is high. Okay. So means where exactly it is low actually. So where it is uh, where you're having a specific department having quality issues. So we need to pinpoint and understand exactly what improvements can be implemented there. Okay, and where exactly we need to build in, we talk about the test first approach, right? So we, how we can build quality into the entire process chain. Okay, so we talk about uh, business and technology alignment, optimizing the system as a whole. It is not just one uh, piece or one unit improvement we are talking about. We always talk about in case of value stream, how you can optimize the end to end value. It's not just one piece of one piece of work or one department work that we are optimizing. This whole system thinking approach that we talk about here. Okay, so what is the result? Faster delivery, higher quality and higher customer satisfaction. When we talk about uh, 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 no higher value in less turnaround time, obviously it will result in more customer satisfaction, more revenue, which result in uh, no more increased stock price in this uh, cycle, which actually impacts all the critical parameters for the organization. Okay, so uh, this just I think we talked about all this. So in terms of uh, uh, agile in conjunction with how exactly value stream management benefits. So I don't have to repeat all this. Okay. So this is again, uh, this is how we talked briefly about uh, different forms of uh, uh, value streams. There are two important forms of value stream here. The core process that we do for a request and requests of a customer and you know, the core process that we deliver a product or service, what we calling it as uh, earlier, I was talking about operational value stream. That's our business value stream. Okay, it could be fulfilling a loan or it could be e delivering a specific service. Okay, but there are sub streams that we talk about. So as I talk about here, we are, we are talking about, suppose uh, the loan process itself, the earlier example. So here you need to come up with uh, some no fulfillment system, okay, or some credit scoring system, okay. So it could be a bank has some its own credit rating mechanism, uh, gathering inputs from various parameters. They have to develop an application. So in order to develop an application, you need to again build a value stream you know, to in order to deliver that product. It could be, let's say, an IT product we are developing for credit scoring system. So it obviously needs people from different different divisions, different locations, and it could be different geographical locations as well. Where we organize the actual team teams to cut across from different uh, geographies here and define a value stream for it, right? This is the, the product delivery e value stream or what we call it as a development value stream in uh, uh, in SAFE, okay? So here we are talking about an operational value stream and the supporting value stream says in each of these, you will organize as a separate release train, what we call it as in SAFE or a separate release process in, in, in different areas. But each of these is organized independently and in conjunction with this main operational value stream. Okay, so these are all the support value streams. Within this. So this is simple how we organize. The first thing we need to come up with is the business value stream. And second thing you need to come up with, what are the development value streams that actually supports this operational value stream? So you organize the entire organization, entire people, entire technology around this framework. So you need to identify 
who are all the front facing people part of the value stream operational value stream who are all the people working as part of the development value stream and organized according to the development value stream and if you have identified the different value streams and development value streams and how exactly it links to the operational value stream each of these development value stream makes a difference to the end customer value okay that is how you do the link between this development value stream versus the operational value stream right so you need to understand this link between these you know, different uh, value streams that we talk about here and then try to optimize each of this by using value stream maps uh, we we talked about earlier by using the methods and the tools that we have so the crux of uh, any framework if you look at any agile framework is this whether you call it a uh, disciplined agile or uh, safe or uh, safe is actually completely revolves around this identify the operational value stream identify the development value streams how you optimize these development value streams and deliver better value okay that's the crux of uh, safe and same case uh, disciplined agile is no different it also talks about how you optimize using various uh, blades and various tools uh, you can optimize uh, these value streams okay so this is uh, basically the same example so how you can uh, optimize a credit scoring system uh, it could be a core banking application suppose in order to deliver this in order to deliver this uh, loan application loan service to the end customer you might need a supporting loan origination system you need to have multiple channels for attracting the customer you need to have credit scoring system and core banking okay so here these three ee products are organized into single value stream okay channels loan origination system and credit scoring system is organized related systems are organized as a single value stream and it is what we call it as a, a agile release try in uh, some of you familiar with the safe terminology okay and how you organize this agile release try in into multiple uh, product increments and our multiple let's say we talk about 10 10 week releases and as a product increment and all that this goes uh, deep dive into uh, safe technology but that's how you organize the overall uh, projects uh, around value streams okay so that's uh, i think that's pretty much is uh, gist of uh, uh, what i wanted to cover i'm um, maybe you know i not sure whether I'm too fast. Are there are a couple of slides that you see here uh, uh, in terms of uh, you know, the differences between value stream. We talked about the three important concepts, right? So value stream identification, mapping, and uh, value stream management. So you can look at, sorry for the, the small text here, but you can uh, identify how exactly these three different. And again, as I said, these are not three not completely different topics. One is complementary to complementary to other because value stream management can be done after value stream mapping is complete but the focus here is to look at uh, suppose how from the improvement standpoint we look at you know how we actually improve the value delivery by automating data collection so we look at automated data tools where you have a system like devops or uh, 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 the, the tools, develop tools in place where it automatically feeds all the lead times, process times uh, into your system where you it automatically flags you off that there is a delay happening and know where you need to focus and optimize. Think about a system like that. That's actually what the target of value stream management where we wanted to automate this entire process flow and where you feed the get the data in automated way into your uh, dashboard the the lead times process when you do value stream mapping it is all done manual okay so where we sit with the team come up with the value stream map uh, identify the future state map and all that but when we feed this into the tools uh, the devops tools and all that we are talking about so everything is automated you get your lead times how much time it is uh, a specific ticket is waiting in specific department and how much time is actually they're taking to process it how many people are involved and you can actually calculate whether it is uh, in certain cases we use this value stream maps to understand whether we have a high manpower low manpower in specific area and all that as well okay so this is how different uh, differences focus for each of these uh, tools between value stream mapping and uh, value stream management okay specific 
metrics I just added here, uh, the process time, flow time, uh, efficiency, how you call it, flow efficiency, we call it, uh, that's an important metric actually. Flow velocity, how you calculate. So it's just uh, some some reference material. This is, you can find this uh, information even the scaled agile portal as well about the specific VSM metrics. If you type, you'll get it. Okay, so that's where I stop. Now I think that's pretty much covers. I think uh, overall we covered uh, in today's session. Uh, you no know, a key takeaways I would say is uh, how what exactly is value stream and how you can use value stream mapping tool to to identify what are the uh, uh, no delays and what are the gaps and what are the improvements required and how you use uh, come up with a transformation plan that the future state map uh, from the current state map and uh, we also looked in conjunction with uh, agile so how exactly vsm is the crux of any agile framework or agile tool uh, we talk about including the agile manifesto and also another important factor we look at how we can organize teams uh, work around uh, value streams i think these are the, the four important uh, uh, takeaways i would say in today's session so yeah that's pretty much uh, what i can cover so any questions are we on time uh, can I? Yes. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, yes. We can use uh, next uh, uh, four to five minutes for questions. Uh, uh, you can type uh, questions in the chat. I can read out for Venkat. Uh, please do uh, mm -hmm. your questions. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Let me look at. Uh... Please share book name quoted in the initial slide. Uh, yeah, I can share. Okay, so I'll share the the book titles uh, actually. So there is a, a book by name Machine That Changed the World. The Machine That Changed the World is a very good book by James Womack. Uh, Okay, the next question is any example for organizing a team around uh, value streams live example. Okay, so there are many examples that we can discuss uh, Krishna. I think uh, 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 there is one example actually we talked about right. Uh, we talked about uh, a maintenance ticket, how actually it flows in, in a software development context, how actually it flows different departments, how you can optimize, but organized teams and we, we also talked about a loans example from the bank. Okay, so anything any any it's a simple suppose you can look at uh, uh, not only, not only the loan service uh you can look at any any value stream you look at come up with what are the the development value streams for that and no draw from there go from there so it is not just i think any process you can take so suppose you're developing a product uh, uh for manufacturing suppose you're developing a healthcare application okay so there are different steps involved in that okay so developing an healthcare application suppose you're developing an hospital management system okay so or let's say you're developing an outpatient uh, uh, application okay in an hospital management system let's be very specific so in an hospital outpatient uh, department what are the different steps involved patient walks in that's the first step and no uh, looks for a doctor and uh, uh, patient uh, id creation and the patient uh, uh, counseling and the prescription medicine and so on and so forth right so what are the different steps involved in order to provide medicines for the uh, uh, the, for the customer, you should have a pharmacy management system. So in order to uh, do a, a lab test, you need to have a lab information system, okay, a, 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 what you call a, a diagnostic center. So there are different, these are all the, the development value streams which actually supports the core value stream of outpatient management, right? This is, you need to define this uh, operational value stream and uh, how 
the different uh, outpatient we then we can talk about outpatient it could be uh, diagnostics it could be asp and also the internal process like suppose some of the value streams are not externally visible so i talked about hr marketing and no uh, and so on and so forth so those are all the also have their own value stream so these are all comes under different if you deep dive into different types of development value stream again you come across all these okay so you need to identify all these and then uh, look at uh, you no know, different uh, parameters how you can optimize in each of these yeah okay and we have uh, prashant uh, is asking we have customers on one side and uh, suppliers on other side both can be big or small for negotiation of requirements how do you factor in suppliers issues into the value chain okay so if i understand correctly we have customers on one side and suppliers both can be big or small uh, how do we factor suppliers issues see that's where actually we talked about uh, one important attribute of value stream where we need to feed supplier actions also into the value stream okay so let's say a supplier is delivering a critical part okay into your uh, uh, value stream process okay so you need to make sure that specific action is very much part of your value stream that's where you need to include your uh, uh, customers uh, uh, the suppliers also into the value stream because let's say for example the critical part is not arrived on time and there there is a significant delay um, that you see in your end value and end deliverable okay so obviously you need to optimize and you no know, make sure it comes on time so how you integrate the the suppliers actions also into the value stream and how you optimize along with your regular within the organization process flow is what actually matters both needs to be considered actually okay so any more questions any final us uh, good i think uh, uh yeah so you can reach out to me in you no know, uh, any time uh, this recording also is available in youtube as uh, when i mentioned uh, you can reach out to me any time in either in linkedin or through pmi uh, pcc channels as well so we can uh, discuss so i just said this requires some practical side uh, knowledge also actually helps this topic where you need to look at identify a project uh, that you are currently working on how you can come up with a value stream map and if you have any questions on that i can definitely help support on that sure yep uh, a couple of announcements here and before i thank you commented so these are the upcoming uh, workshops i think dates are a little bit uh, different here you can reach out to sheshu ganti who is our uh, director for academy uh, you can mail at academy at pmapcc.org uh, or you can reach out to whom to him at uh, uh, his contact number is double nine eight nine one three six eight three one for the uh, workshops and uh, you you will be getting the PDU auto credited uh, in the segment way of working uh, since you have already registered with your PMI ID for PMI members uh, you will get one PDU credited in next uh, couple of days or within a week. And with that, uh, thank you very much, Venkat, for again coming forward uh, with the interesting topic. Actually, it's a need of the hour because uh, since many organizations are big enough and uh, how we uh, reduce or increase the efficiency, we need to have an end-to-end -end idea about where the value uh, creation is started and uh, uh, delivered to the customer. And I I I 100% echo with all your key takeaways and linking to the agile is very much essential. I know most of the uh, I I know how, why you have tried to link that part of the agile because most of the folks in traditional world thinks that you know OSM is a traditional part. No, it is very much game in the agile world as well. It's 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 a need of the hour. And thank you very much with your wide rich experience. Uh, you have fantastically connected the dots which are uh, helpful for the uh, low, uh, people who are working in the current uh, world. Thank you very much and hope we see you again with another session uh, in the upcoming series. And I'll, I'll, I'll keep on uh, uh, you know, connecting with you. And uh, thank you, sir, uh, taking for time on Saturday morning.
and sharing with your uh, uh, no, uh, valuable uh, uh, no, presentation with our members. Thank you once again. And also, I thank our uh, my fellow board members, especially Gopal, for the uh, events uh, for setting up this you uh, know Webex and uh, the other. Uh, the communication teams and uh, Suresh, uh, Komal, and Lata. Thanks for joining for uh, today. And uh, yeah, the next session uh, I'll uh, we have for the as I said, it's a monthly uh, call. Uh, I'll come up with the next uh, topic and the speaker as well in the coming uh, weeks. So keep uh, stay tuned and uh, look forward to to join again for the next session on the next month. Thank you once again for joining today and have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all of you. Um, uh,